Today I wanted to talk about buttons and getting them to function. If you watched the previous tutorial, you could see how to make these buttons. This happens to be an animated B button. And, uh, but this is about getting the, the buttons to function using ActionScript. So, what I've got set up here are three buttons on my stage. And what I'm going to do is link them to a series of um, frames, I'm sorry, to a series of scenes three scenes, three buttons, and um, I want to point out that when you become more uh, adept at using Flash, you probably would not work in scenes unless you're doing a video type of animation, but for interactivity you typically would work with movie clips on a much shorter timeline, or eventually not even have a timeline at all. But since we're just getting started, uh, we're going to stay on the timeline, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my menu to a few other scenes and one of them that I'm going to connect to is my walking scene because that's a scene that I, I sort of like. So first things first, what I want to do is name my buttons. So I'm going to choose my, fr my frontmost button here, go to the property windows and you can see that I've actually gone ahead and named the instance but if I hadn't, if I had chosen one that didn't have a name it would say instance name and as soon as I click in it I'd get a cursor. So let's come back to this one. I'm going to say name it walk and I'm going to use the underscore btn. Uh, for those of you who want to use code hinting this underscore btn is a standard name you would use for buttons and of course this is a button symbol. So that's part one, naming the button. Part two is adding the action script. So you'll notice that I have um, two layers in my movie, uh, one named AS for action script and one named GUI. Again, this is a little bit overkill for this simple of a, a project, but if you were to get into much more complex projects, it's a good idea to separate out your timeline scripts, such as stop, um, from your button scripts. So, we're almost ready to do the script. Um, and to make it easier for you, I have on my blog put in a commented script for those buttons. So I'm going to copy that in and I'm going to paste it. Now for those of you just on YouTube, I will uh, give you a link. For those of you in the class, you know where that link is. And my computer's moving very slowly because I'm also processing video. But Action Script 3 cannot be put on objects. Right, we do not want to put it on the objects. So make sure that you have the cell selected and I'm going to now just paste that script. Now let's talk about what's going on with the script a little bit. Anything that's turned blue, which you may recall from our basic stop action, has particular meaning to flash. So when I type the word function, it turns blue, and that lets me know that, yes, flash recognizes that. Now this second word right here is the name of the function, and it's named whatever you want it to be named. I tend to name them for whatever it is, the scene that I want it to go to. So I want it to go to that walk scene. So I'm just going to call this go walk. And now this will be the function name that I refer to when we call it from the button. So I'm going to name this go walk. Let's choose another arbitrary uh, scene. Let's take a look at some of my scene names here. Let's say go um, custom bounce or just go bounce. Again, it doesn't matter what I'm naming these. I could name them Harry, George, as long as I remember what they're doing. Now what I want these buttons to do, what I want these functions to do is go to and play a particular frame in my scenes. So frame one, we're going to just use the frame number for now, although later we would use frame labels. So I want it to go to and play frame one of my scene for walking. Let's click over here and get my walking scene. It is called walking. Notice that it's lowercase. And when I clicked over here, my action script disappeared. Don't be frightened by that. We can jump to action scripts um, quite quickly just by clicking on whatever frame we see here in this action script window. So this gets me back to my GUI layer in my menu and I want to rename this this scene here to walking. 
and I hit enter, which is not a good idea. You can see that now everything is green. Let's get back to my walking here. Um, because I haven't closed my quotes. My scene name needs to be in quotes, and it should turn green. So that's a good sign. Uh, I am using the inch marks, not the typographical quote marks. So I should, even though we call it quote, it's actually the inch marks. Um, so while I've got this here, um, let's take a look at the next function. I'm going to say go bounce. And the name of my scene here is a little more complicated. So I need to be careful that I type it properly. If you can see over here, Custom Bounce Plus Shadow is the name of the scene, kind of a long name. It does not, however, have any spaces or funny characters. So um, spaces sometimes will translate to 20%. We don't want spaces in the names of our scenes. So you may need to rename your scenes. So I'm going to name this Plus Shadow. Close my quotes with the inch marks, and yes, it did turn green, so that's a good sign. It is case sensitive, so hopefully I didn't type it badly. All right, that's part one. So here's the information about the buttons. Don't forget to name your instances on the stage, right? So I named that one button Walk Button, W-A-L-K Button, and I named the other Bounce Button, I believe. Let's double check that. So what's going on here is there's an event listener that is waiting for the user to click. In other words, we're waiting for a mouse event. We're, it's listening for some reason. I don't know why they chose listen instead of watch or whatever. But it's listening for a mouse event. That mouse event happens to be click. And when someone clicks, what I want the walk button to do is go walk. So what's go walk? Go walk is the name of my function that I've defined up here. So when somebody clicks on the walk button, ideally what's going to happen is that they will go to execute that function, which I had typed wrong there. <laughs> that wouldn't work. Um, and it will go to my walk scene. Bounce, let's say it's going to go bounce and we have named that function go bounce so that's what we want it to do now before I make this test I want to go back to my flash timeline which is actually hiding behind my actions here and let's check that I have a go bounce button so I have a transform button I have a walk button and I don't have a bounce button so I'm gonna type in here bounce underscore btn. Now we do have a third button here which doesn't have a script but that should not be a problem. So I'm going to test movie now and keep in mind that you cannot test scene when you do your menu because if you do test scene there's no place else for the button to go. Okay here we go. So here's my little buttons. I hover over them, they fly by the way, when we click on them, <laughs> so here we go. Let's test this one, the walk button. There we go. Now the problem is, of course, I don't have anything coming back, so this will just continue to play the rest of the scenes of my movie. But my buttons work, and that's pretty much how you make a button script work. I will, once again, post that link here. Um, to get that action script that you can just cut and paste and modify it to your usage.